Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. And there has been a fascinating development in the whole Victor Oziman saga. Mikel Obi has come out in the last, I don't know, couple of hours, two, three hours, talking about the saga and his involvement and the role he played in Victor Oziman potentially signing for Chelsea this summer and how it all played out. Um, and many people have speculated for a while now that, you know, Mikel Obi was, you know, kind of involved in that whole deal. Um... A fellow Nigerian, of course, and he's spoken very highly of Uziman and spoken of the fact that he wanted Uziman at the club and then went on and proceeded to slag off most of Chelsea's current crop of players following anything, you know, but like a stellar display. I mean, we saw recently what happened with uh, Nicholas Jackson and Jackson coming out and absolutely slating Mikel Obi. And it seemed kind of obvious, although it was said more in like a kind of like a dig, you know, kind of like a, um, a derogatory manner as to, you know, potentially Mikel Obi, you know, yeah, it's like he's doing this. And, you know, people will come out and say stuff like that. But um, in his latest episode of the Obi-Wan podcast, which, you know, you can see, um, you can go and check that out on his channel if you want. But um, he breaks it down. He breaks it down. He breaks down. I think he, he thought he was doing good, essentially defending the player, because a lot of stuff came out in the media that, you know, Uzman wanted um, big money. And he did come out and say that Uzman was asking for what he was worth, which is fair. I mean, fair enough. I, have, I never have any problem with a player dictating his demands. And it looks like, you know, some middle ground was found between Chelsea, the club Chelsea, and um, the player Victor Ozyman, and the deal was close. Now, what I have an issue with and what I want to talk about today is what Mikel Obi was doing, you know, with that deal. He, an ex-player, former player, who is neither an agent of, or for the club, and I don't think he's, he's involved in the club in any capacity. Um, he looks to be right now a media person um, and is supposed to be unbiased as a media person. He's regularly, you know, a pundit on all of these, you know, football shows. And in his defense, people came out and said, as a pundit, he's supposed to criticize players when they perform badly. Um, so, Ozyman, uh, no, no, so um, Nicholas Jackson shouldn't take it personally because, you know, he's just doing his job and he has to criticize. But with the news now that he was involved with Ozyman as a player, you know, potentially come to Chelsea, it's mad it a little bit in my perspective. It looks very much looks like all of the comments he's been making up to now has been to serve his, you know, personal interests and what he could potentially get from, you know, that deal as like a, I don't know whether it's like money on the part of Ozyman. Um, again, maybe national bias, you know, but it looks like, you know, it's not necessarily what, you know, is in the best interest of the club because Otherwise, he would leave it to the club, right? Nicholas Jackson has been performing, I'd say, somewhat admirably for a, probably a tenth of the wages Ozyman would command. Ozyman is a star quality striker, don't get me wrong, but is he enough to fire Chelsea to any kind of success where, you know, Nicholas Jackson seems to be picking up some kind of slack? Cole Palmer is picking up some kind of slack. Again, whether or not he'd even suit the system. Um, and for me, just, you know, putting down these players time and time and time and time again uh, makes it seem as if he was using his influence in the media because with a hundred, you know, thousand subscribers on YouTube, potentially more on Instagram and other social media platforms, and as like a legendary figure of Chelsea, you know, the owners would probably be listening. Fans would probably be listening to what um, Mikel Obi is saying. Will be sharing with other people. The sentiment around the club would probably be okay. Jackson is not good enough for Chelsea. You know, Chelsea need to get Ozyman because let's not get it wrong. I mean. Chelsea weren't, you know, scrambling for Ozyman, um a season ago, two seasons ago. It really was only when Mikel Obi started saying like, you know, yeah, Ozyman wants to come to Chelsea and he's talked to Ozyman and Ozyman wants to come to Chelsea. And that planted a seed in, you know, the minds of most supporters. And then, you know, it kind of went from there because there were other options in Europe. Um, Gyokeres, for one, who is probably, in my opinion, a better player. Um, and other strikers, Ivan Toni was also an option for a long period of time. And it just kind of seemed like, you know, the stars aligned in that sense. Ozyman is a fan of Chelsea, his childhood club. And it seemed like, you know, he was playing the media role and putting it in you know, the minds. And we see it so many times. I mean, Sky Sports and, you know, the English pundits and how they favor English coaches, essentially giving, you know, jobs to the likes of Lampard, um, Rooney, Gerard as well, because, you know, they are, they are friends and they are pals. Um, and this seemed to take, to take it another step because... He was involved. Like, for all intents and purposes, he was involved. And if Ozyman had gone to Chelsea, I'm not sure this would have come out. Um, I don't know why he came out with it, to be honest. I think he came out to try and defend Ozyman because of a lot of criticism Ozyman, you know, has been taken. But 
honestly, I don't think any former player should be, you know, negotiating a deal unless he's an agent. And if that's the case, he shouldn't have a media platform to be coming out and talking like he's an unbiased, you know, um, person. And it kind of explains why Nicholas Jackson had like this whole big issue with Mikel Obi because it looks like he's trying to take money from the player's mouth. It looks like he's trying to take food out of the player's mouth. It looks like he's trying to sabotage Jackson's chance at Chelsea for his national compatriots, you know? And so, yeah, I don't know. That's just my, you know, my two cents on it. I don't think it's right. And it looks like, you know, kindly seems like in January, that's the, that's the MO, that's the modus operandi. That's why potentially Ozman could come to Chelsea and that could spell the end for Nicholas Jackson. But please, guys, let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you think it's right for a, a, an ex-player to be involved in the potential transfer of a player, especially considering the fact that it, it's a close friend of his, it's a national team compatriot of his. Like, where are the dynamics? And should a person who is, you know, vocal in the media and has influence also be, you know, negotiating deals for players behind closed doors? That's my opinion. Um, imagine, like, you know, a super agent like Jorge Mendes, you know, has like a, a channel and is, you know, just bashing every single player under the sun and only promoting his own players. Like, that's, that's just off and that's just wrong. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. Thanks for watching. If you want to see even more football opinions and insights, please stay tuned to Telecom Asia Sports. Consider subscribing, checking out our website, telecomasia.net, for the latest breaking news in sports and football. And as always, we'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.